Welcome to The Daily Dish with New York Times bestselling author, Leanne Ely. Putting vibrancy back into your everyday life and feeding your heart, mind, body, and soul. Join us every day at 1 p.m. Eastern for Motivational Monday, Tuesday's Tip, Wise Woman's Wednesday, Thirsty Thursday, Food Fight Friday, and of course, Q&A, where no question is off limits, and Soulful Saturday. Here is your host, Leanne Ely and The Daily Dish. Well, we're back. Hello, Lisa. Good to see you. Amber's in the house. Lizzie's in the house. Jenny's in the house. Lindsay's in the house. How about that? We're all in the house. So glad to have you with us. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to come join us. I love it. Marguerite's here. You know what's happening tonight? Who knows what's happening tonight? Who's in Who's in the know? Anyone? Anyone? Hey there, Carla. Thank you. This is my humidity hair, Lisa. Thank you. <laughs> I just, I give up, you know, uncle. <laughs> it's just curly, 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 frizzy, frizzy, frizzy. Anyway, uh, if you know what's tonight, tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern, we're going to be going through the whole dealio on what the Hot Melt 30 is all about. You ready for that? Noreen's here. She's going to do it. Marianne, I know you're going to do it, aren't you? Jeanette, hello. Good to see you. Terry, I'm glad you're here. Are you ready to do it? Catherine's here as well. Yay. Linda, hello. It's been a minute. Glad you're here. Um, I'm excited about this because I think the Hot Melt 30 is our next level up from the sprint. And you know what? We, we always need to be leveling up. That's not perfectionism at all. That's just development, evolution, if you will. Hi, Martha. You know, Noreen's pinky's up already. She's like on this. You know, it's interesting to me because I have watched and seen and and observed how many people are getting um, amazing results. And it really is, in essence, the Hot Milk 30, the Hot Milk 45, the Hot Milk 75. Go take a look and see what our girl Tanya is doing. Hello, Sarah. Hello, Juanita. Nancy, you are here too. I'm so glad. Happy, happy Thursday. So I'm really happy about, um, and tonight's webinar is all brand new. I am writing it on the fly. I can't find my old one. You know, there you go. I'm cleaning all my stuff up. Hey there, Bren. Um, I've got all these projects. I just finished redoing my closet, which was a thing. Jocelyn's got her pinkies up for that. I love it. Um, just finished doing my closet. I'm working on my pantry right now. I've kind of got everything disassembled. And um, after that, I'm going to be working on finishing up the downstairs. So, you know, you get in project mode and you can't stop. I love being in project mode. I think it's so much fun. Lisa's going to do down and dirty hot melt 30. You can do down and dirty hot melt 30. You can do it the way you want to. I'm going to go through the particulars and take you through even what a typical day looks like. The whole thing is being able to wrap your head around something that can I just say it? This is something we really want to do for life because it upholds foundationally that vibrant life we want to live, right? So check it out. Go get yourself signed up. The reason why is that we get seats and not anybody can just randomly come in. This is why I love using Crowdcast because, you know, we play music, we do things, we have fun. Go to savingdinner.com forward slash 30. 30, however you want to get there with a three zero or with writing out 30, it'll be there for you, right? You ready for that? Mm -hmm. Corliss is in the house, Jema is here. I'm glad you're all here. Here is our quote of the week. If the wind will not serve, take to the oars. I told you, I feel like this is the older version of Diana Nyad's find a way. That's exactly what it is really. Um, so we, you know, keep this little thing tucked in the back of your head. Deborah, Gloria, good to see you. You know why I say that? When we cut, when we have something we can fall back on, something that's made an imprint in our brain, we can start thinking, oh, it's I'm not helpless. I'm going to find a way, just like Diana and I had. I'm going to Diana and I had my way out of this. As a matter of fact, forget about MacGyver. He was a fictional character in a crummy 80s series. Diana and I had's the real deal. So there you go. That's that's our new checkpoint. We're going to Diana and I at that thing, right? Hey, Evie, 
I'm so glad you're here, Deborah. Hello. So Facebook, we have the full bloom tickets available for you right now today. Go to savingdinner.com forward slash bloom. It is all virtual, September 11th, all day long. And we're going to take you from fear to the place of courage and how courage is going to help you find your purpose and how purpose is going to light you on fire. That's your vibrant life right there that we're talking about. It's going to be cool. I really hope you join us. It's all day. Um, it's going to be quite something. Savingdinner.com forward slash bloom. Bloom, bloom, bloom. Um, and there's a toupee there if you need to use it. I can't tell you how incredible this is. You're going to get a swag bag. There's going to be probably a code so you can go shopping with a discount for the day. All kinds of things that we're doing. And with you in mind, and I, I really believe with all of my heart that this is one of the things that, you know, this is one of the obstacles that gets in our way. Uh, Jeanette says she's reading Big Magic. Isn't that the most amazing book? That's that's Big Magic just made my eyes pop out of my head. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Sue. So, yeah, we got to do this. This is, you know, this is this is the stuff that we need to do. Hey, Vanessa's in the house. Let's let's hear it for Vanessa. <laughs> I see all of you here. I'm so glad you're all here. Angie, I didn't see you come in. Hello. And there's our girl, Mary Ann. Um, the other thing is, of course, we have our supplement of the week. And can I just tell you, if if <laughs> if supplements had wings, it would be Infla Crusher. You guys are buying the nonsense out of this. I had to order more because we are going through it so much. And I will tell you, once you get hooked on Infla Crusher uh, and using it instead of all the other garbage that's out there, you'll you'll know exactly what I'm talking about, and you will take take notice of these deals. Every time we have a supplement of the week, you should be, that should be your cue. Go get it because you're getting a free bottle, right? That's a $49 value. Buy three, get one free for Info Crusher. Find out all about it at savingdinner.com forward slash show. And I've told you a million times, this is this natural um, herb. Actually, um, it's made from turmeric, which is a root. And this root has been more studies than almost anything else um, of natural thingy. Can you, Marianne says she can't live without it. I'm the same way, Marianne. I took it last night. I was hurting, <laughs> but it just, just, and I, it just helps you go to sleep too, because if you're hurting, you can't sleep. And if you get rid of the hurt, you can sleep. Amen. So anyway, that's, that's that. And, um, uh, let's see what else did I want to tell you? Q and A's tomorrow. Get it, get it together. Will you get it together for your questions? Send them in. Savingdinner.com for, um, Sorry, support at savingdinner.com. Question for Leanne on Friday goes right there in the subject line, and I will answer it for you tomorrow live. I'm going to be on live tomorrow. Remember I said I was going to start recording them and, you know, getting a life and all that? Well, no, <laughs> not yet. Yes, yes, Marguerite says she has to have it daily. I do too. Um, it daily it keeps the inflammation down. It is a, That's why we call it Infla Crusher. Get it? Savingdinner.com forward slash show. That's where we house all of our supplements of the week. So go grab yours while you can. Buy three, get one free. That is a screaming deal. Um, you know, we also are going to start the sprint on Monday. Are you ready to go? Sprint starts on Monday. Go to savingdinner.com forward slash sprint. If you don't have your guide yet, that's where it's housed. You can watch the replay of the webinar. You can get all the things. We have lots of little goodies for you. Food journal, all kinds of stuff that you might want to um, you might want to grab. Okay. So we have all we, we give away the farm folks. <laughs> we do. And the reason that we do that is it is our mission to make sure that you are equipped and ready to go. Yeah. Let's see. Look, I said, ready to go. And what does Nancy say? Ready to go. <laughs> I love it, Nancy. Hi, Jane. I'm glad you're here for at least a few. We'll take, we'll take a few. So don't forget tonight, savingdinner.com forward slash 30. 30 or 30, write it out, whatever you want to do. It's at 7 p.m. Eastern. Even if you can't make it, you can watch the replay. Am I right? Now, I've been talking all week about automation. Hello, Susan. I'm glad you're here live, by the way. I've been talking about automation, and you know, I was thinking about it. Do you remember the Dr. Seuss book, Oh, the Places You'll Go? <laughs> I was thinking about all of the places you'll go, all the habits you'll develop, 
oh, the life you lead, if only you could automate some things. Now, there's things in our lives that we can't always automate, but <clears throat> there's also things in our lives that we can totally 100% automate, right? Totally 100% automate. Terry's got her bones in the freezer. She's all ready for this. Are you kidding me? So I'm going to tell you a story first. This came from uh, Atomic Habits. I told you I'm a big James Clear fan. And he was talking about uh, John Henry P Patterson in 1844 had this little store that was basically selling to miners. So um, like, you know, coal miner kind of guys and supplies and everything like that. And he started to, he wasn't understanding how he wasn't making a profit because he was selling all kinds of stuff. Finally figured it out that he was getting ripped off by his own employees. Because back in those days, there was just, you know, people hand slips and, you know, you open the drawer full of cash and you give change and all that. So, you know, it didn't take much to, for the unethical to really take advantage of this poor guy. And he was losing money. So he find this guy, Mr. Ritter, I think is his name, who had this, um, it, he called it the impenetrable, impenetrable uh, cash register. And basically what it do, did is after every transaction, which it rung up so that it made a basically a um, record of it, um, he, he would take the money and put it in the drawer and then he'd close it and it would lock. And that made it so that John Henry Patterson went from not making any money to practically overnight, you know, in a year's time, he had a $5,000 profit. You know, in today's terms, that would be a $100,000 profit. So you think about that. It's pretty amazing what happens when you fix something that's a big problem. You know, you can fix something. So what does that mean? You know, when, I, when we look at that, he automated ethical ethical behavior, didn't he? That's what happened when he did this particular thing. And I love this whole, um, the, I love talking about this particular thing because, you know, it, it takes the thinking out of, am I going to be uh, unscrupulous or am I going to do the right thing, you know, kind of a thing and, you know, take the money and it's got to go into the register. I mean, everybody's there to watch. They didn't have cameras back then. They didn't have, you know, all the other gizmos and gadgets that we have, but you know, there's still employee theft is one of the big problems with these kind of businesses. And it, this is how um, Mr. Patterson changed his whole business. So I was thinking about that and, and I was thinking about, you know, the bad habits are, can also be ba based on ethics and can be also be based on well, all kinds of things. But the interesting thing that the, um, James Clear said about this whole thing, the best way to break a bad habit is to make it impossible. And that's exactly what he did with this cash register situation. He made it so that they couldn't, they couldn't rip them off anymore. So uh, when you, and so when the best way then to create a good habit is to automate it so you don't have to think about it anymore. And that's what we've been talking about all week. So here's a couple of ideas that James Clear had for automation. We have a few that we talk about all the time, piggybacking habits, um, setting up your morning and your evening rituals so that everything is, is ritualized to the degree that you wouldn't think about not doing it, right? That That's how um, clearly important these things are. But he had some great ideas of, of just automating some things just to make it a little bit better. Number one was nutrition um, and portion control and things like that. Sometimes, and I've shared this with you before, we eat like we are large animals <laughs> coming to the trough, you know, and eating endlessly. I used to say that, you know, I would strap on the feed bag like one of those old plow horses and just keep going. I had no on and off. Well, I had an on button, but I didn't know how to switch off the off. Uh, hi, Mimi. I'm glad you're here. So he's, he says, instead of automatically grabbing the dinner plate, grab the salad plate. A smaller plate is going to force a smaller portion. And oftentimes we eat, we could be eating as healthy as all get out, but if we are strapping on the feed bag, like I said, and it's all boundless, too much food and the groaning Thanksgiving thing, well, that's a problem. Too much is too much. Um, he had an idea for sleeping. No more television in the bedroom. What a concept. We don't have one in ours and we've never had one in ours. And I don't like that. I don't want to lay in bed and watch anything. 
I want to lay in bed and go to sleep. I want it dark, 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 dark. Hey, Betsy, I'm glad you're here. Um, you get that, right? When it's dark, you sleep. We already know sleep hygiene, and this is one of the biggest things. And the electronics in your bedroom, bad idea. When you have electronics in your bedroom, that's going to keep you awake. If you do, at least turn off your Wi-Fi at night. Um, productivity. How about this one? This was a James Clear thing, and he's got a really good example for this that I'm going to share with you, is delete social um, media off of your phone and to delete all games. That's going to boost up your productivity. And I, you know that. We all know that, right? We all know that. Um, for happiness, go get a dog. Am I right? I mean, today, I'm, I've just been having a little Lincoln Fest, having the best time with my puppy. And he does make me happy. Doesn't, doesn't petting your dog and loving him up and watching that tail wag just do something for you? It does. It just You can feel it. Um, and for your health is get better supportive shoes. Have you noticed that when you have good supportive shoes when you're walking, that you feel better and you don't get back aches and all of that? Yes, Sharon, you can get a cat too. Cats purr. I think get a get a pet. You know, not a goldfish. Sorry, not a guppy. <laughs> you need something with fur on it. I think that at least that's how I look at it. And then for finances, you know, one of the things that we can do to automate and to get things figured out we can go through all of our services mark did that and we got everything cut down we said well if we're going to do this we might as well change over to that cut it down cut it down cut it down you it's amazing what happens when you talk to somebody and say hey this is you know i'm paying too much or you raised my bill or whatever they don't want to lose you as a customer they're happy to do that beverly got a cat for her birthday i love that so what we have to do is, you know, sing the praises of technology, don't we? I mean, look what technology does for us. I ran out of coffee filters and, and had to borrow a couple of coffee filters while I waited for Amazon to bring them. And, um, you know, Amazon's bringing them. Amazon's bringing the coffee filters. Amazon brings my dog food. Amazon brings my shampoo. Amazon brings everything to my house. So I'm delighted about everything. It can bring you groceries. You can do healthcare via Zoom now. Did you know that? You can go one on one with your doctor. You can do, you can even go with, you know, counseling appointments. There's, oh gosh, I can't remember the name of it. It was actually um, somebody on Shark Tank who came up with this idea of being able to Zoom and talk one on one with a counselor so that you can sort things out if you need, you know, if you need that kind of help. I mean, I think this is the most brilliant idea I've ever heard of. So, anyway. Wendy, I'm glad you're here. It makes all the difference in the world, doesn't it? When you know that you have this technology to support the life that you want to live and you can uh, think about all of that. I mean, I, I you know, I've got uh, the Peloton bike. How much you want to know how much time I'm saving every day? A half hour driving and a half hour coming home. And I, I could have my workout done in just the time to drive there. And it's all done at home. Just amazing. Technology. Folks, technology. So, and, and oh, the other thing is, is uh, signing papers for, for uh, a house, all done by DocuSign. You know, I, I don't know if you've ever used that, but it's just print here, 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 and boom, you're done. It's just fantastic. So technology handles a ton of our tasks, uh, but there's a downside. And I'm going to, you know, I have to come to the um, binge watching confessional and tell you I just did it with Downton Abbey. I mean, we watched six seasons and I don't know, it didn't take very long. Can I just say binge watching? Um, if you're on YouTube, they'll autoplay something next for you. So it's not like you're going to go to YouTube and watch five minutes. You can go to YouTube and keep going and keep going and keep going. That, they love that. They love that. Um, there's Uber delivery. They'll, they'll give you food from any restaurant you want. There's Pizza delivery. Well, that's been around for a long time, but everybody delivers now anything that you want. And what I've noticed, and I'm going to just pull from my own head here. Um, this is what we say. Well, when we go and we're on our phones, you know, or binge watching or uh, social media, when I'm just taking a break, an hour goes by, two hours goes by, or um, calling for the pizza. I'm just too tired to cook. Or 
it'll just be so much easier if we. And this is this is what technology has given us the ability to do. And this is, you know, quite honestly, this is in their marketing plan because people, you know, technically don't want to. And if there's another option, we can get into that. Absolutely, Sharon. Things can get those things get addictive too. Absolutely, 100 percent Hi, Lisa. And Mercury, rate's right. Yes, yeah, say no to pizza. Pizza's speaking of addictive. That's also addictive. So we how often have we said um this? You know, I'm I'm asking you, how often have you said these? I mean, just taking a break. How often have I said that? How often? So James Clear um, noticed that he was doing this a lot. And he said, oh, I'm just taking a break. And then he'd get lost down that slide into social media. And so you know what he did? He had his assistant reset all his Facebook passwords on Monday and not give them to him until Friday. So it forced him off and it forced him into bigger creativity. He also removed social media and games from his phone. Now, that takes a lot, but think about it for a minute. He automated his productivity in favor of getting rid of all the distraction, understanding exactly how that works, ex understanding how exactly what this is going to do. You know, it's a problem. So, but we also have to look at this. One of the things that stops us from this, I'm going to call it the magical time-saving capability of being able to automate is, um, what Benjamin Hardy calls overweighting. Are you ready for the overweighting? Isn't that a good term? We overweight because we have to research it some more, research it some more, right? We overweight because we don't quite understand one little thing. We overweight and don't start it because it's not Monday. I'm not going to start until Monday. We overweight because um, we it's not quite perfect. Anyone? Come on, raise your hand. If this is you, if this sounds familiar, have you ever put something off and instead of getting into the place of getting it down so that you can automate it, you are pushing it back so hard because of all the research that you need to do and because of all this other kind of stuff. Anyone? I'll tell you what, that's me. That is me in a nutshell. And you know what the bottom line is? Over planning kills projects. It does. Not only does it kill projects, it eliminates the magic of momentum. And you know what? These are things that move the needle. These are things that change and shift the way we get things done. There was a book from, oh gosh, Matheson, I think is his name. And it was called Ready, Fire, Aim. Ready, Fire, Aim. And do you know what that is? Ready, Fire, Aim means get on it, get it done, and stop messing around. When we are in the middle of overthinking and overweighting and over planning and over this and over that, we never even get to the place of automation, let alone get anything done. <laughs> you know, and then we think, well, I'm just going to take a break. Take a break from what? You haven't done anything. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm so guilty of this. This is why I'm talking about this because I really believe this is one of those huge obstacles that's in our way from massive productivity. It is. So to get to the place of automatic of automation, we have to start thinking in terms of ready, aim, fire. Ready, fire, aim instead. Okay, so check it out. How do we do this? I'm going to show you, give you 10 reasons, 10 things. 10, 10, 10. <laughs> Did you see what Susan said? Yes, but after your show, I'm hitting the food store and getting week one done. There it is. So here, here, I'm going to take you through this, okay? It's, it's going to help a lot. First, if there's a mindset piece. And the mindset piece is, number one, be okay with excellence. In other words, excellence never goes after perfection. Excellence goes after doing it the very best that we can to the ability that we have at the moment. You got me? The, our definition of excellence and our levels of excellence are constantly shifting because we get better as we go, don't we? Think about doing your first sprint versus the one you just did, right? How much easier was it? How much quicker did you do it? How much more automated was it, right? Same idea. So be okay with excellence and allow for those places of stumble. It happens. 
Number two, like I said, mistakes happen. Here's the deal with mistakes. And you know this, we've talked about this so much. When we get to the place of mistake, when we take out that lesson, extrapolate the lesson from the experience, then we can we know better and we do better. Quite simple. We don't have to roll around in it. This is what we call the experience file. The experience file is there to teach and to better us and to help us to learn from. We don't have to wallow in our mistakes. Mistakes happen because we're human. This side of glory, we will not know perfection. That's all there is to it, right? So number three, before you automate, you labor over it. There is some labor involved. You're going to work harder. It's going to take more mental uh, acuity, more mental um, energy expended toward the task. The first time you made chicken broth, you know, and there's Wendy going, chicken feet? <laughs> the first time you ever made chicken, you put chicken feet in your broth. I mean, let me just tell you, there was an emotional expendable energy going on there, wasn't there? You're just going, oh, chicken feet. Oh, you know, and I'm making all this stuff and I don't know what I'm doing right. And help me, help me, help me. Right. And now it's just like, boom, I'm going to stop at Walmart, get the feet. So let's get them done. <laughs> Do you see the difference? First time versus now where you are. We've automated it. We've made it part of our normal, part of this is what we do, part of this is it, this is how it works. Automation comes from that first time of overly thinking it and overly planning and overly, but not overly waiting. You know, we still go ahead. We still go through. But before you before you automate, it's going to take a little brain power. It's going to take a minute to do. Um, number four, you also got to personalize it for yourself, right? This is your program. This is your life. And when you look at it and you say, oh, well, she's doing this over there and this, she's doing that over there. What are we, what are we, what are we doing here? Right? We're comparing ourselves to what they're doing. Do you have four children? Do you have a elderly father with, with, you know, with dementia living at home with you that you have to take care of? Do you have, what's going on in your house? Do you work swing shift? You got to adjust and customize and personalize this to fit your life, right? This is your life we're talking about. No one else's. Don't compare yourself and allow for that kind of flexibility when it comes to it. Personalizing it is everything. When you start to customize your plan to fit your life, then you're going to find something that you can do forever. Uh, number five, be very intentional about it. Why are you doing this? Why are you making that broth? <laughs> We're making bone broth, Wendy. Check out savingdinner.com forward slash sprint. We start on Monday. You want to be a part of this. It's a free program. You can pick up your guide there a whole bit. Okay. Savingdinner.com forward slash sprint. If somebody wants to drop a link in there for Wendy, that would be really helpful. Um, you know, when we're intentional, we say what we're going to do, we announce it, we proclaim it. Remember that? Decide, decree, and declare. That's what it is. It's declarative. This becomes a manifesto. This becomes, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm going to do. This is the name of the game. This is what it's all about. This makes so much sense. Because when we decide and we put our energy towards something and we make it this, we make this our path, then there's there, we have no other choice but to purposefully go down that path and do the things to get it happen, to get it done, you know? Or we could just sit at home with all the food bought and let it rot in our crisper. Really? Is that what you're gonna do? Not not on my watch, you're not. You're going to make that stuff. You're going to go make it happen. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Make it happen. Be intentional about it because this is the thing that's moving you toward your goals. Okay. Um, number six is be present with it. When we automate, you know, when we automate things like, you know, mundane tasks, like cleaning the toilet and, and getting the dishes in the dishwasher and all that. When we're, go ahead and, and be out, be it not in it, right? Be thinking about what you're going to do next or whatever. But when you're actually preparing your bone broth, say, and it's your, especially if it's your first time or getting ready to do it, you print it out. 
you print out that guide, all 18 pages. Yeah. And you can complain all you want about the ink and the paper and saving a tree and whatever. I'm not going to listen to it. <laughs> just not. I'm just going to tell you right now, point blank. She, who is intentional, prints it out, puts it even in, in little, you know, paper protector kind of a thingies. And I mean, we're talking getting it done. You want to get it done, then you have it in front of you. You have it intentionally in front of you. You're present with it. You are about it. No, 18 pages for the whole plan. The bone broth is just part of it, Wendy. Number seven, remember this. Remember this. This is an important one. Write it down. You are a bridge builder, okay? Bridge builders. What happens when a bridge is built? What happens? You are here, you want to go to there, you've got to build a bridge to get through that gap, to get into the place of completing that goal. There's many different tasks involved. There's the design, there's the materials, there's the, the tools that are needed, right? Some of it is a little bit more detail oriented and a little bit more intense and requires special skills and all of that to get it done. And on the other hand, there's other stuff that's just mundane. We're laying down the tile. We're laying down the wood. We're laying down the whatever. I mean, however your bridge is built, think about it. That's how this whole thing is because some things are going to be faster and easier than others, and some things are going to be, okay, so what's going on here? What is holding me up? Do I need a specialist? Can I shortcut this? What can I do about it? So, for example, I had a woman who, uh, the whole thing, we're talking about bone broth now, the bone broth thing just held her up. And I said, just go buy it. You know, Kettle and Fire makes it. You know, here's a link. And they had some special going on and it just saved her bacon. And that's how we need to be as bridge builders. We need to look for the right people, the right tools, the right everything and get her done. That's it. That's it. Number eight. If you don't know the answer, then go ask for help. Because you know what? I read this, I read this um, quote today that you might look like a fool for five minutes by asking a question, but you'll be a fool forever if you don't. Mm -mm 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 -mm. What does that tell you? Right? This is how we build our bridges, y'all. This is how we get things done. We ask for help. Hey, I don't know how to fill in the blank. Or hey, somebody want to explain chicken feet for me? Hey, I have X, Y, and Z going on. Can you help me out? When you ask for help, you know what you're doing? You are building a bridge. You know, you're crowdsourcing it. You're like the Amish, you're barn building, <laughs> you know? Bring in the community. Let's get her done. Makes all the sense in the world. And number nine, congratulate yourself when you finish a task. Congratulate yourself. You remember that a couple of weeks ago? We were talking about BJ Fogg and what he said as far as, automation of habit and how you can go instead of having 66 days that it takes, it takes, what did he say? It takes 66 days. Well, conventional wisdom is 21 days to form a habit. The research shows it's actually 66 days. BJ Fogg, a researcher said in his mind, if you can get your brain on board and that's what his whole book, Tiny, Tiny Habits is about, then you can do it in three days. And one of the biggest needle movers on this whole thing is to get your brain involved. So when you're done with this task, you high five yourself and you said, yes, I did it. And you might feel kind of foolish, but your brain doesn't understand that you're not doing this in front of an audience <laughs> or whatever. Your brain understands that you are giving immediate feedback for what you just did rewarding you, giving you the good feeling or endorphins and hormones hanging out and all that. It's well worth it. So make sure you invest in congratulating yourself. Amen. And then number 10 is shampoo, rinse, repeat. These 10 things, you do that, you automate. You do that, you get her done. You do that and you're going to find yourself making it a lot simpler, a lot easier for yourself. And you will evolve with what it is that you want to do. You will change, you will get better, you will up-level all of it. Because we're never static. We're not static human beings. We don't sit in limbo. We get better. We develop. We move toward when we put it in our mind to do it. You've got to do it. Oh, Wendy says she's going to go research the, the bone broth. Okay. 
Just don't you don't overthink it. Don't over plan for it. You know, you don't need to do that. Remember that you don't need to do that. We overweight. We want to get her done. So that's what I have for you today. And I hope you're going to be joining me tonight for tonight's webinar. Go get yourself signed up. This is the Hot Melt 30. This is for women who've decided to go the next level. This is for women who have decided that their lives are worth <laughs> this kind of, of um, commitment. It really is a commitment. Savingdinner.com forward slash 30 is where you're going to find it. I will see you tonight at 7 p.m. Can't wait. Peace be with you. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching. You can find us on YouTube on the Saving Dinner channel or on the Saving Dinner Facebook page. Check back daily for new episodes, Monday to Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern. If you missed the live show, you can watch the replay. Until next time, pinkies up.